Hey, welcome back. This is Kevin from Let Me Tech You. Again, if you enjoy the channel, like some of the videos you're seeing, like and subscribe if you can. I'll be throwing up new videos on networking, automation, cloud, and anything you kind of recommend or you're looking to get more um, insights in, just let me know. But in today's video, we're going to be going over uh, following up from a uh, previous video on subnetting. Um, so we built, well, this isn't going to be subnetting, but more so, uh, being able to control how subnets can access other networks on a, uh, switch using X standard access list. And if you haven't caught the previous video, check that out. We built basically this, uh, simple network that's VLAN, um, into separate subnetworks. And they're using a VLAN interface to be able to route between the different networks. So in this video, we're going to go to go ahead and eliminate the ability for, say, one network to be able to communicate with another. And this could be for security reasons, um, you know, maybe a way to kind of eliminate the need for, you know, some networks to talk to others um, so that you can eliminate your blast radius in the event of maybe some type of attack that happens or maybe just to kind of, you know, kind of, you know, segment, segment data, stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a standard access list. And I also showed this in another video on how to use an extended um, IP access list as well and the differences. So a standard access list basically allows you to um, cre uh, create rules based on the source uh, IP address and with these uh, being that they're so granny, uh, not so granular, they're kind of, you know, really simple in terms of what you can do. You want to always place these as close to the destination as possible. And that eliminates you potentially uh, blocking access to some other portion of a network that you should be getting um, access to. So, and, and that's because you can't uh, in the access list determine the destination and that's what how you what we'll do in the next videos do it with an extended access list. So here I'm going to go and I'm going to do show access list and let's see if we have any. So we currently don't have any. These are ones that were already in there, so we won't worry about that. But let's say let's go here and we we can see that we can communicate from 192.168.1.5 and we can get to 192.168.2.5. Let's just make sure we can here. Okay, so we can. So what we're gonna do is from that network, we're gonna block uh, from 192.168.1.1. We're gonna permit that to 2.5, to 2.0 slash 28 network, but we don't want any other networks to get to it. So if we do a ping, you know, let's see, I think this is probably IP address or let's see, IP, IP config. Let's see how do we show our current network on it. Oh, show IP, okay. This is like an emulated PC, so the commands are a little different. Okay, so that's two. So let's see, so show IP here. So this is 3.5, so let's ping 192.168. Uh, let's go 2.0. Destination host unreachable, let's see. Oh, I'm like, that shouldn't, that should work. Okay, so we got communication. So what we're gonna do is on the switch, we're gonna go in and we're gonna build a standard access list. And how you do that is we're gonna go access list and we're gonna use the standard range here, which is one to 99. And then you got your extended access list range here and then the extended um, newer um, numbers here, newer ranges, which we won't need in this video. So we're gonna just use access list five and then permit and then 192.168.1.5. And then we're gonna do wildcard bits. So 
instead of doing like your subnet mash, you have to do these uh, backwards. So anything that stays the same needs to be uh, keep us. Uh, you need to put it as a zero. So 0, 0, 0 0.0.0 means that the first three numbers must match. So anything in the 192.168.1 network, and then we're going to put dot two five five, which means anything from zero all the way up to two five five, and that you can determine based off of your um, wildcard bits, um, you know, or your cider range. Basically, if you have, um, you know, so it, it would be all of these, but let's say you only want the first, you know, uh, like say if you had dot two forty, that would give you everything in the. Let me think this through here. So that would give you anything from zero all the way up to 16 because we're actually uh, let me let me see here now I'm like drawing a blank so two four two five five gives you everything so anything in that range but then 240 basically how you determine that is you take your subnet bit and let's say it's a slash 28. So that's 16. So 2, 4, 8, 16, or actually 128, 64, 32, 16. So you add those up, and that gives you 2, um, 240. So what you would do is you would take 255 minus 240, and then that's going to give you 15. So if you wanted to only be what's in this uh, that particular network, you could say anything dot 15. So then in that case, then it's only going to allow your your uh, the networks in between that 192.168.1.5 or 1.0 up to 16. So it, it's kind of weird. It's called wildcard, um, you know, bits. So basically, if we were actually we can actually do a simple Google search, and I'm sure there's calculators that'll show you. Let's see if we can get like a wildcard bits slash 28 here. So you can see how I got 215. So you see I got dot 15, and basically what I was saying was you got 240, you just subtracted from 215 or 255. So you got 15, 7, 3, 2, 1. So kind of weird. Um, once you get a, you get a hang of it, it, it kind of becomes secondhand, uh, secondhand to what you're doing. So now we got uh, that in there. And actually, I should have done 0 there. And let's exit out there. So now if I go... Show IP address or show IP access list. We should see okay, permit this network, and we need to now add that to as closest to the destination, which would be we want to permit that on. Let's go back to our topology. So we want to allow that on zero one. So we need to put that on interface VLAN 20 going out because we want it to be going out that interface. You can do in, which would be anything going into the interface or anything going out of the interface. So let's go back to the switch and we'll go interface VLAN 20 and we'll go IP access group 5 which is the access list if we do so access list 5 and then you just want your how the packets are going to be routed so it's going to be outbound so now and then you know what 
think we could actually do a log on so if we can do well we'll keep it that way first because you can do logs on the access list so that you can see where it's get your hit counters i'm going so if i do a show run and we go all the way to the bottom i could have just on that interface there let's keep going okay we can see now it's ip access group five out so let's now well, let's go down the list and see who can get access to 2.5. So show IP, it should be this one. So that one can ping it. And you're probably wondering, well, how does it know to deny the other ones? Well, it has an implicit deny at the bottom. So if you don't uh, identify any other networks that are allowed to get to it, then it's going to automatically block it with its uh, implicit. Um, deny at the bottom all the access list that it creates so now if i do a ping so here oh this is actually 255 itself so let's skip that one so if i ping this one again it's being administratively prohibited if i ping this one again or actually it's creating the address okay so let's do a ping on this one. Ping 192.168.2.5. Administrative prohibited. Well, then we're like, well, you know what? Hold on, wait a minute. I want this network to be able to get to it. So let's go back to our switch and we'll go back to our access list. Now we'll do um, IP access list five because now we're actually going to, or actually we need to go IP um, access list, I believe it's standard, and then the number five. Now we're in the configuration mode. And if we do, if we look up above at our access list, we can see that there's already a five there. Now we should be able to do, let me see, do show IP access list. So you can see how it has the number 10 here. So that's the sequence numbers there. So we'll need it to be either above or below that. So you can only go as far below as one and up to this many sequence numbers. So I recommend to kind of keep them spaced out so that you can actually add some stuff in between if you need to be. So let's do a 20 and then permit 192.168.0. Let's say 4.0 and then 0.0.0.15. And then if we go back here, oh, actually, I don't think it'll actually take it since we're still on. Okay, there it is. So, so there you go. So now we, and we shouldn't be able to still get to it from here. Still disabled. So we got two networks that are able to get to it and then one that's not. So that's one way to kind of control um, communication securely across your VLANs using access list and standard access list. And reason being that they're standard is just uh, you can kind of, if you don't need anything as far as like complexities in the access list, it's kind of nice to go with standards because they're kind of easier to read, kind of easier to manage and uh I mean, you can kind of, you do have to, you know, be weary of where you put them because you can unintentionally block access to other resources, say, on that VLAN that you might need to get to. Um, so if you want to do some stuff like that, you'll need to do extended um, access lists. Or you can do stuff like... Uh, um, you can actually use per, um, standard access list, but I'll also just do like host. So instead of doing like the full network, we can do specific hosts that aren't able to access this network or access this host, stuff like that. So again, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, reach out below. I'll be sure to get with you on any questions you may have. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you can. I'll be sure to get back with you. Check out my blog, letmetechyou.com. That'll be down there in the comments, or I mean in the uh, description down below. And again, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.